Over the last 200 years, we've converted 70% of the world's grasslands, 50% of the world's savannas, and more than 35% of the world's forests into agriculture. Agriculture is very important to me because it provides food for my family. I'm able to pay school fees, to pay rent. Agriculture is of fundamental importance around the world. But in some cases, food production conflicts with other important goals of biodiversity, climate and human well-being. The Landscapes for People, Food and Nature initiative has been formed to find and implement solutions that make sure that all important values in a landscape are provided for. Today, the Earth faces ever-increasing population pressure, changing climates, persistent poverty and decreasing biodiversity. We are already beyond the point of diminishing returns in the way that we try to feed 7 billion people. But we are, factually speaking, diminishing the very natural foundation upon which we are actually trying to produce food security for the future. Land use managers and uh, policy practitioners experience uh, considerable challenges. The issues at landscape level, we are also um, including cultural diversity and different people use their resources in different ways and that really makes it complex. What are the objectives? Are we there to conserve biodiversity? Are we there to sort of maintain people's livelihoods? Are we there to sort of build resilience to future climate change? In fact, we must address each one of these objectives simultaneously using a whole landscape approach. It really is a new way of thinking, of bringing knowledge to bear to solve problems that we can no longer deal with in a piecemeal, one-by-one -one fashion. We have to bring these things together at a scale where we find solutions. What we mean by integrated landscape approaches is, is taking account of all of the elements that we find in those landscapes. The people, the habitats, the governance structures, and the societies. How do you deal with a systems approach to trying to address multiple impacts, demands and needs. On the shores of Kenya's Lake Naivasha, a wide variety of groups with interests in the landscape are working together to restore the lake's unique ecosystem while providing reliable water for agriculture and local residents. I'm very glad to see a government uh, effort to work with the private sectors to uh, find those solutions and implement them uh, on a ground-based uh, reality. In Kajabi, Kenya, community groups are co-managing forests and farms to preserve the biodiversity of the landscape while improving market access and sustainability of local farms. When I do the mixed farming, from the trees I'm able to get firewood, and at the same time when I need to construct a house, I can get timber from the trees. Then from the farming, I am able to get different crops that I feed my family with and I also sell in the market. So I'm able to earn income from the different crops I'm growing. Integrated landscape approaches are those approaches that really look beyond a single plot. We have to have the mechanism to work with people, to engage people, and help for people to recognize the value of the landscape and to be able to work together to enhance its productivity and sustainability. In Kikonyoki, herdsmen have control over vast areas. They have partnered with wildlife managers to restore rangelands while increasing the health and value of their yeah. livestock. Most of these uh, pastoralists own huge pieces of land and they are taking care of their land Properly, they are doing pasture conservation and management. Uh, they are keeping the pasture for their livestock uh, to be used during the drought. And they are able to produce better livestock for this market. An integrated landscape encompasses the whole mosaic of farmlands, conservation areas and other land uses in a given area. 
By examining the relationships between various land uses, we can create synergies that protect wild plants and animals, increase agricultural production, and improve rural livelihoods. The role of the Landscapes for People, Food and Nature initiative in helping to scale up these integrated approaches around the world is to provide a platform for different experts and practitioners to come together to share their knowledge, expertise and resources and to create new and stronger networks to drive programs on the ground and also to help change the policies market structures, market incentives that are needed to reinforce implementation and support implementation on the ground. The initiative has three components. The Global Review is asking what do we and what don't we know about how to bring about sustainable landscapes. What we don't know, how can we learn from our prior collective experience? What we do know, how can we communicate that better to decision makers to allow them to implement sustainable landscape approaches? The dialogue that we're trying to promote is really among stakeholders with very uh, different perspectives and even interests, but they can come together at the landscape level to seek solutions. So we want to promote a dialogue between the people within the landscape who manage these resources, those that benefit from the resources that may be in cities, and policymakers and, and donor agencies that will influence decisions, laws, and, and certainly one of the most important things is investments to make sure that these landscapes can become a model. The purpose of this action and advocacy program is to make some very significant changes in the institutions that could actually support these landscape initiatives. The initiative is strengthening landscape activities on the ground and promoting better policy across national government, financing, business and research institutions. Decisions made over the next several years will define the future of rural and urban landscapes. This initiative calls on people at all levels and with many interests to intentionally plan and implement our activities together. A group of leaders coming from very different backgrounds have the capacity to effect real change, but in order to do so, they must speak with a set of common objectives, a set of basic understandings, and a set of shared outcomes or goals that we are trying to achieve. There's one thing that is common. We want to get out of the poverty loop and that will help everybody, both rich and poor. We want a future where we have improved livelihoods of millions of millions of people. We have, want a future where we have access to water, access to energy, access to land, where we produce enough food for everybody, but at the same time we maintain all of the fundamental ecosystem services uh, that landscape uh, can provide. While the challenges we face are complex, by working together with a landscape's approach, united by our common interests, we can overcome them. This call to action is an opportunity for all of us to speak with a single voice, with clear language, so that policymakers and businesses and farmer leaders and all the other groups that need to be involved can hear a single clear and inspiring message. Join us now as we foster dialogue, learning and action to support integrated landscape approaches. Together we can increase prosperity, end hunger, protect biodiversity and preserve nature.